hey i want to make this short and sweet okay this is a money market funds crash course so get your notebook and your pen and maybe a cup of tea and let's get started my name is coach susan and i'm very happy to have you here on another episode of finance friday <music> there's a month that ends that i don't mention money market funds on this platform at least twice right so i've been getting a couple of people asking if i can do like a detailed video of oh my goodness i sound like such a youtuber a lot of you guys have been asking but yo i'm serious you can check my comments um i've done i ever did one back in 2020 on my instagram page but i've never done one here on youtube so i figured why not okay so it's just gonna i'm just gonna be giving you some quick fire tips on things that you need to know about money market funds and um i hope that by the end of this video you will understand a bit more about money market funds than what you already know right now okay so how exactly do money market funds work and what are they in the first place so money market funds fall under an umbrella of investments that are called unit trusts if you just google unit trusts in kenya you will definitely find examples so under the unit trust we have like four major funds we have a money market fund we have a bond fund we have a balanced fund and then we have an equity fund okay and a collective investment scheme is just where a company or an investment firm or what we like to call a fund manager in investments pulls money or collects money from different investors and invests that money on their behalf right so um the biggest difference between those four funds under unit trust is ideally where your money is being invested for you so i want us to like really focus on money market funds and get to understand the ins and the outs of what money market funds are okay in order to understand money market funds the first question that we need to answer is where exactly is my money being invested ideally um this um investment companies or insurance companies that have the money market fund product will collect money from susan and a hundred other a uh, hundred thousand other kenyans and invest that money on our behalf so where exactly do they majorly focus to invest our money so when you put your money in a money market fund your fund manager or your company of choice will collect all that money in that money market fund portfolio and majorly invest that money in three places so they will invest some of the money in treasury bills which are short-term government debt securities they are also going to take a bit of that money and maybe put it in some short-term corporate debt and then the rest of it is in well negotiated for bank deposits because um ideally the goal is that a money market fund should be liquid so a bit of the money will be in bank deposits so that when susan or someone else wants to withdraw then you can still be able to access your money in two to four working days because a bit of the portfolio has been left in well negotiated for bank deposits okay now now that we know exactly where your money is being invested it is easy to answer the question what are some of the risks of a money market fund now i've had a lot of people uh saying uh that money market funds are like a hundred percent safe but that is not very true in fact i wouldn't necessarily say that there's any um investment or even a bank that we would really deem a hundred percent safe when you're looking at investments you want to look at it in like when you're looking at risk majorly we have low risk and then we have medium risk and then we have high risk investments so money market funds fall under the low risk investments and the reason why a money market fund is considered to be a low risk investment is because the underlying assets i.e where your money is being invested are assets that are considered to have very low risk exposure the beauty with money market funds however is that even with the low risk that is associated with them one thing that is usually guaranteed is that as much as the interest rates may change the amount of money that you've invested that is your capital remains intact so they guarantee capital preservation and that is what makes them super amazing 
because you're able to kill two birds with one stone you're able to save because you get capital preservation like your capital will always be intact and then you get to also invest a little bit because your savings are earning an interest okay so when it comes to like the major risk that i would love to really highlight in money market funds is that the interest rates usually fluctuate on a daily basis so there is no such thing as a fixed like interest rate per annum or per month in money market funds depending on the prevailing market conditions the interest rates will fluctuate normally they will oscillate between seven percent to 10 percent um and so when they actually calculate the average per month or calculate the average per year is when they're able to tell you like the average interest rate or what they call the effective annual yield of this money market fund last year or this year has been nine percent or 9.5 now before COVID, these interest rates were slightly higher, okay? So you would get that they would get, go as high as 11.5, sometimes even 12%. But because of the pandemic, a lot of the global markets and interest rates have definitely been affected. And so that is why we are experiencing... We're experiencing... We're experiencing... <laughs> highly uh rather uh slightly lower um interest rates than what they used to be before covid the hope and the expectation however is that we will see better interest rates with time so the risk that is in money market funds is one the interest rates are ever fluctuating and then number two especially in seasons like the one we are in where the um inflation rate is quite high you might find that the money market fund interest rates are quite like they're almost at par with the cost of inflation and so that is another risk that you may experience so they are low risk investments which also means they are low return investments okay now we've talked about the return there's something awesome that we need to highlight about money market funds and it's that they compound your interest either on a daily basis or on a monthly basis now the thing with compound interest is this it is a factor of time like the longer you stay invested the more you will experience the greater effects of compound interest because ideally how compound interest works is that let's assume i invested like 1 million last month and after the interest has been compounded this month or rather the interest i earned this month is 6000 they will take the 6000 and reinvest it back in month 2 and now my principal will no longer be 1 million but however it's going to be 1 million 6000 and then i earn interest that month maybe i get to 13000 and then in month three, my principal will no longer be like the 1,006,000. It's going to be 1,013,000. Now, because of that, this makes money market funds a good alternative to saving as opposed to using banks because banks will calculate your interest using what we call the simple interest calculation method or what is commonly known as the compound in or rather um, the straight line method. Okay, so if I put my money in a bank like my principal from say January to December will still remain 1 million 1 million 1 million unless I top up and I add some more money however if I've put my money in um, a money market fund then even if I don't add a single dime throughout this year the year my interest keeps accumulating because of compound interest and therefore if I opened a fixed deposit account that gives me 9% per annum and I opened on this other hand a money market fund that gives me the same 9% per annum over time. Now, within the first two, three, six months, maybe even 12, the difference doesn't look very significant. Okay. But when you leave your money, when you have a habit of leaving your money in money market funds, for instance, say like over one year, two year, you two years, you start discovering or realizing the differences. I will still make more money or I'll still get better interest in a money market fund that gives me 9% as opposed to a fixed deposit bank account that gives me the same 9% simply by merit of how my interest is being calculated. So if it's a bank, simple interest. If it is a money market fund, compound interest. That is why they are a very good alternative um, for saving through banks. Okay. 
now in case you would like to calculate or figure out like if i put ten thousand or twenty thousand in a money market fund for two years how much money would i get i actually have a compound interest calculator on my website under my resources i'm going to link it down below just so that you can play around and find out how much money you would uh how much you would need to invest to make an x amount of money in a money market fund and now that we are um talking about like interest rates and everything how best can we utilize this money market funds we've already learned where is my money being invested um what is the risk associated with this investment what is the return like how is the um interest rate being calculated and we already have a calculator linked down below guys do your math okay just click on the link that i will put down here um regards to compound interest calculation and just figure out exactly how much you would make okay um now how do you choose or rather how can you utilize a money market fund money market funds just by their nature they're very low risk okay they guarantee capital preservation so you're not afraid of losing like the initial capital you invested and because of this you can best use them for what we call goal-based saving or goal-based investing so let me give you a good example like for instance your emergency fund right so money that i'm putting in my emergency fund is money that i would like to utilize or i would like to act as my safety net in the case that anything was ever to happen to my job or to my source of income now i've been funding my emergency fund for close to like four years now and throughout those four years i've only had to liquidate it once okay and because of that I always recommend that if you're considering to start an emergency fund, probably consider putting it in a money market fund because at the end of the day, most days I didn't need that money like right now, right here. Because in my budget, I have an allocation for small inconveniences or miscellaneous costs during the month. So the kind of emergencies we are talking is like someone cannot get out of hospital because we need to clear a bill. Um, I've lost my job and I need to make rent. Like it's big stuff that happens and you need to recalibrate. recalibrate. So you're using your emergency fund at, like as a safety net or money for a rainy day right now because you can withdraw your money from a money market fund within two to four working days it serves very good as an avenue to accumulate savings but also you've put those savings in a place where you can earn a bit of interest so when it comes to mmfs i always recommend that you can use them for goal based saving as uh, for example saving for an emergency fund you can also use them for saving for sinking funds or what i love to call nowadays lifestyle accounts so this is where you're saving up to you can open one to save up for your car when your car comes you can use it for car expenses you can save up for travel you can literally start a whole different money market fund just for raising kids because they are a whole excel sheet so from their wardrobe needs to schooling and all that so goal-based saving is very um well done because one you've taken the money out of your current account or your checking account so you don't have the temptation of like using that and spending it um haphazardly um and then you're also able to like put specific uh, purposes to um this money market funds okay so they are very good for goal based uh saving and investing but also as a good parking spot for money before you figure out where you'd like to invest now there's something i love to tell people you cannot money market fund your way to financial freedom like this is the barest minimum investment that you will ever have to make but if you need financial freedom you have got to do more than just money market funds because remember we said that they are low risk therefore low return okay so assume you want to raise some money maybe 500k put it in stocks or put it in a bond or um, invest that money in a friend's business as a as a vc or your own business but you need to accumulate that money instead of leaving your money uninvested in a bank account you can always utilize a money market fund as a parking spot for funds like 
I am trying to accumulate 500k, but now I only have 30k. So I'll just be saving slowly by slowly in my money market fund. Of course, my money is earning a little bit of interest every month. And in that way, I'm able to separate my monthly finances from this um, goal that I'm saving for. But also you're getting some help because your savings are earning a good interest okay so that is how you can best utilize money market funds for goal-based saving and investing and also as a parking spot for funds um that you're yet to decide what to do with them okay now in terms of withdrawal i've already mentioned this all you have to do is actually send an email after you've opened an account and you know my name is so and so this is my account number i would like to withdraw x amount from my money market fund Usually someone will respond within the next maybe five or six hours from um, the money market funds I've personally worked with um, and they just confirm receipt of your request and within two to four working days you already have the money in your bank account. Some of them like Zimele, Brita, they have actually made it in such a way that you can withdraw directly to your M-Pesa through the app or rather through the portal or through USSD. So there are options. All right. Now, how do you choose a good money market fund? I'm pretty sure we all want to know. Okay, Susan, thank you for all that information. But can I get recommendations? Like who would you recommend as a good money market fund? Now, I have a love-hate relationship with that question and I'll tell you why, right? I've always loved to tell people, as opposed to just like getting a recommendation, company X, company Y, um, and you know, like this is just where I'm going to invest. It's always good to get the basics first. Um, like how would I choose a money market fund? And with that information, it's going to be very easy for you to do your due diligence and to decide which company works for you. But um I will see if at the end of this video, so stick around, I may give you a couple of money market funds suggestions that i think would be helpful for you okay now there is very little very very little that one money market fund can do to significantly differentiate its returns from others you know why guys because all of these money market funds are, are in one market the kenyan market okay number two they are all investing in the same same treasury bills offered by the central bank of kenya the only difference is probably like the private, uh, rather the corporate debt they are doing and how well they can negotiate the bank deposits. So what am I trying to say? I wouldn't necessarily say like, you see, like there's a market average right now, uh, around seven to like 10%. I don't think there's a money market fund that can give you 12% right now or 13% right now because that's just how the market is. That's the market average and it's ever changing. Today, CIC might be at 8, Sanlam at 9, tomorrow, vice versa. Like these ones are at 9, this one is at 8.9. So like because they are ever changing and fluctuating, when you look at it throughout a period of like one year, the market average is almost the same. So I would, I'm not saying that don't look at interest rates, but what I'm saying is that one, I would be careful if the market average is like at eight, nine, and someone is giving me a 12, which market are they operating in or what level of risk are they exposing my money to that they are able to make a bigger interest or rather a higher interest than what is the market average. So be careful of that. There are no such things as anomalies in the market. Um, so there's very little that one company can do to differentiate its money market funds returns so you'll find that most of them are just um again oscillating between these interest rates that i've given you okay so when you're choosing a money market fund other than checking that the interest rate is within the market average this is what i would recommend okay look for longevity of the company and transparency of the company i love 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 to invest in companies that have been here for like over 15 years plus why it's because like the longevity of this company has been proven if they were to con people and run away with your money they would have done it two decades ago but they've been here for like over two or three decades i think that is the first like i get a level of confidence if the company has been here for a while there's also a level of transparency in the sense that they will share the interest rates on their website um the reports and the fact sheets are on their websites they will publish in the dailies that is actually one of the requirements by the capital markets authority that the daily interest rates are published in your daily so you will get that in your business daily your standard and your nation media newspaper 
towards the very end where they have like the stock market prices and all that you will definitely get a column on unit trust so you want longevity and transparency you should also aim to get a money market fund that's giving you a return that is up on the bare minimum higher than seven percent um i'm using seven percent because i'm working with an assumption that the in um inflation can inflation rate in kenya yo i'm talking too much and my camera is showing <laughs> um anyway back to the conversation you want to um you want to get an interest rate that is higher than seven percent uh assuming that the inflation rates is at seven percent because the most important thing in any simple investment is that you get a return that compensates you for inflation so if it's, if inflation is at seven i'd like a money market fund that gives me a bare minimum of seven and more right so that i can be compensated for inflation okay you also want to inquire about experiences past experiences that people have already had with that company so that you can ensure that one there is ease of withdrawing your money and most importantly like responsive customer service you don't want to talk to people who don't want to talk to you okay um so that is very important okay so that is generally like I've, I've i've helped you guys with a couple of things what money market funds are where your money is being invested the risk and return of that investment how to use them and even how to choose a good money market fund now lastly i want to address something this is what money market funds are not okay money market funds are not a get rich quickly scheme like just because we talk about them doesn't mean that if you put your money there you know for one month or two months or three months now you know you're good you've got money umeomoka that's not it manage 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 your expectations i talked about this in a previous video you need to stop expecting too much from too little also you need to stop expecting like a money market fund to give you a return like what a government uh, infrastructural bond would give you because those are tax-free and they will charge they will give you an interest rate of say like 13 percent per annum vis-a-vis -a, -vis a money market fund that will give you eight percent or nine percent or even ten percent so manage your expectations like it is good that you understand what money market funds are best suited for okay so they're not a get rich quickly scheme you need to manage your expectations you need to invest regularly and consistently all right and i'd also like to give you a couple of tips they are not tax-free and therefore most of them if not all will charge you a 15 percent withholding tax on your interest income not on your capital but your interest income so when you get in your statement and you're like mm, nah, these people are, are, are stealing from me you need to take into consideration that most of them have um like a two percent management fee like an annual management fee and that is usually charged on just your overall portfolio throughout the year and then like there's a two percent management fee there's also a 15 percent withholding tax on your interest income so those are the charges and the costs that are associated with a money market fund all right now again if you look at it in the short term that can seem to be a tad bit discouraging because you're like what where is the return there for um but then you need to give your investments time i keep telling people like within the first six months to one year you've not earned the luxury of complaining so just be a little bit patient and like let your investments compound eventually the costs become very minimal because um in especially in comparison to the return you're getting because you're also doing a bit more so um plan to actually invest regularly plan to invest consistently um, and give your investments time money market funds actually start making sense when you give your investments time so i'm talking like one two three years of consistently putting your money there and you will get what we are trying to say so i hope this video was helpful oh i owe you guys some recommendations all right so um now just because i've mentioned this company one this is not a sponsored post um but also i would love to advise that you guys conduct thorough due diligence on these companies but some of the best money market funds i've 
um, interacted with. I personally have money market funds in these three companies. I have a money market fund in CIC. I have a money market fund in Sanlam and I do have a money market fund in Zimele. However, I do know that there are quite a number of money market funds also that do equally well, like the ICA money market fund, the Britam money market fund, and uh, maybe the Nabo Capital money market fund. So there are quite a number of them. Just get online and just Google money market funds in Kenya and you should get some very, very good recommendations. So thank you so much for watching. Um, in case you have any questions, just, you know what to do. Drop them in the comment section down below. Um, also share this video with all your friends, like and also subscribe so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was worth your while. I will see you on the next episode of Finance Friday.